<laughs> okay, so the idea is gonna be this. I'm going to talk about an uh, exercise that you can do for your left hand today um, that you can um, use uh, to improvise and even to compose or whatever, but mostly to make sure that your left hand is up to game, okay? So there's two exercises that I like to do, which are very useful, and I like to use them uh, even when I'm uh, actually performing. One of them is just the, the simple pattern that I covered, used the three-finger technique last week. So the pattern is this. Everyone knows this pattern, right? You're just playing every four notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But the idea now is to do this legato. So you're going to maybe play just with the thumb and, and, the, and, the, and the finger one here. But you're going to do it like this. Faz favorzinho, entra no meu computador ali, entra no YouTube e vê se consegue uh, achar minha live. Uh, entra no meu canal do YouTube. Pode fechar essa janela aí. É? Uh -huh. So, uh, and then you go back. Ele só não pode tremer a mesa. Não pode tremer a mesa. Leva o laptop daí. And then you go back like this. And this is the harder part because now you have to do a lot of pull off, so it's really going to strengthen your pinky. Like this. This is the harder part right here. When you do this note, followed by this one. I'm using the G major scale again. Okay. And then the pattern is this. This is really good for electric guitar players because uh, they use a lot of legato. But if you apply this, uh, these exercises, está tremendo muito a mesa, vai ter que sair daí. Está tremendo a mesa. Está tremendo a mesa. Tu pode levar o laptop ali do lado? O laptop está travado, né? Ah, vai Cuidado para não tremer a mesa. So, um, if you apply these techniques to the uh, acoustic guitar, to the nylon string guitar, it's really going to strengthen your hand. It's like lifting weights. Uh, if you do this on an electric guitar, it's a lot easier. But on the acoustic guitar, you really have to make sure that you pull off strong enough to project the note. So that's the exercise. You should apply that to every skill that you know. For the first uh, part of this lesson, I'm going to apply this exercise to three note per string patterns. Okay? So. up uh, I just went down the Dorian now I'm gonna go up on Phrygian or well, up physically downwards uh, in pitch so uh, the downwards is the best part because you get to practice the pull-off and then up on Lydian because if you're in a musical situation where you hear a line like this or you're building up energy in a solo and you want to play a faster subdivision because your your musical brain is calling for that and the right hand cannot follow because this is an issue that happens to me a lot sometimes I think about a, a, an idea but my right hand cannot execute it or even if you can't execute it sometimes if you try to play that with your right hand and, and you and you enter no YouTube you can poder me ver can poder me ver no YouTube uh, as if you're playing that with your right hand and you're playing every note, it sounds like a machine. It sounds too much da -da 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 -da, and that's not sometimes what you want musically. So doing it this way, you have two advantages. One, it sounds easier on the ears because you're not, you're not uh, picking on every note. It sounds like a machine gun if you do. Da -da 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 and depending on the style, maybe it's, if it's flamenco, it's good. It's, it's nice to play uh, all notes. But if it's a jazzy situation or a Brazilian situation and you don't want to sound like a machine gun, then you can just use the legato and it sounds smoother. And the other uh, advantage of knowing this is you can get to faster speeds than when you depend on the right hand. Because this way, the right hand gets uh, saved from a lot of work. You don't have to uh, stress the right hand. So let's do this one more time, slower this time, so you guys can follow me. <clears throat> Four notes at a time, G major, Ionian scale. So I go. No meu canal. Não faz 
assim, entra no Facebook chat e entra no chat do Emerson, tem um link ali. So again, see the hammer-ons? The way down is good to practice hammer-ons and they have to be strong because you have to make sure you project the note from the hammer-on. Gonna get strong when you do this exercise, and you should apply this exercise to every scale shape you know. <clears throat> Again, we're using three note patterns, three note per string patterns. The next one, you can play pretty fast. Uh, I, I didn't really warm up anything, but I'm gonna try to play it faster so you can see the effect. And the way back. Now, this is the idea for the legato on the left hand, three note per string. And then we're gonna pair that up now with a two note per string pattern. The same idea, but two notes per string. This is really going to build a very um, useful vocabulary for your left hand, which is really gonna make, take your playing to the next level. <coughs> Beleza, agora pra mim, é, por favor, bota aqui na minha cadeira pra mim, obrigado, Tchê. E aí, muta ele, muta ele. Now, for the, for the, um, for the um, two note per strings, I'm going to use the pentatonic scale, okay? And um, just one second, guys. Muito obrigado, Chico. Obrigado pela força. Eu faço isso para poder ver o comentário das pessoas. All right, we got some people. Hello, y'all. Hello, Slim. Bengals. Alexi, what's up? Thomas. Carolina. Nice to see you again. Richard, hey, guys. Thank you for being here. So. Huh? Lá em cima, é. é só subir aqui, uh, no banheiro azul. So now for the two note per string pattern, this is also very useful, but it's going to be a little different. And it's important to run the exercise so that uh, you create a physical vocabulary. That you've, uh, once you run this once, it's going to be sort of in your brain. And that's what you want, is to acquire the physical vocabulary. Uh, any questions you guys might have, just, just write me, okay? Um, I can see your comments. Uh, so here we go. For the pentatonic scale, let's use the C major pentatonic scale on this shape right here. Starting on uh, G. So the pentatonic scale, first I'm going to play with the fingers. That's the scale. Here's the pattern, four notes at a time, doing legato. No, uh, play as little as possible. The, the rule for this, basically the protocol is this. You're only going to play once per string. You're only going to play the right hand again when you change the strings. If you're still on the same string, you don't use the right hand anymore. Only use it one stroke per string. So you get this idea. So that's a pattern that needs to be memorized. One, once again. And the way back. Apply that to the next door neighbor. Of course, I haven't mentioned this, but it's important to give yourself a beat because then you practice rhythm at the same time you're practicing technique. To practice this kind of stuff without a, a, a metric, without a, a, a rhythmic consciousness, is, is not as good as if you do it with a rhythmic consciousness. <clears throat> so I'm gonna think. And it's important to practice both ways because the way up, up in pitch, but downwards, uh, downwards um, in uh, physically, you're practicing hammer-ons, which are very important to strengthen these two, these two fingers right here. And when you are uh, coming downwards physically, um, or upwards physically, meaning the, the opposite way, you're practicing the pull-offs, which are also very important vocabulary physically for your right hand. So uh, again, the way up, the way back, all pull-offs. The next guy, the next uh, pattern is this. Uh, this is pentatonic scale again, C major. So here we go. 
Um, also keep in mind, a major pentatonic, what are the intervals that it has? Tonic, second, major third, perfect fifth, and major sixth. So you got this. Ah. The way back. The next guy. Um, I'm always thinking intervals here, although I'm talking about technique. My mind is very much aware of intervals. If I stop in your interval, plane, like say for example, that note is the sixth. How about that's the fifth. Anywhere you stop, that's the ninth. Okay, so continue. The next shape is right here. So I'm gonna apply the pattern. back uh, and now if you want to take this to the next level what you need to do is challenge yourself to do different subdivisions so the first one I'm doing taka, 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 that's 16th notes so when you do this in 16th notes since it's a four note sequence it's pretty easy because how it's gonna be so let's challenge ourselves to do a different subdivision let's try triplets first so triplets you're gonna have Ta, 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 and make sure to place the accent on one every time. So, ta, 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 ta. so you're gonna have this. And then. The birds are singing today. So here we go. <laughs> something harder to, to get this to the next level. Uh, any questions so far? Muito bom, iMuse Academy. Believe, what's up? What's up, Bob? Did you say uh, here we only hit each string once? On the, yes, you only hit each string one time. All the remaining notes, if they're on the same string, they should be done legato. So you're either going to be hammering on or pulling off. Um, welcome, Bob. Violão é arte. Muito bom. Nice. All right, guys. Keep keep the comments coming. Any questions? Uh, please let me know. Here is uh, let's do in quintuplets. Now this is gonna get interesting. How's a quintuplet? One two three four five. One two three four five. When you're exercising something and you have to think hard and you can't quite get it the first time and then you sort of get it in the second time, that's the ideal situation of your practice because you know you're evolving. So that's the kind of practice you want to have. You don't want to just keep running what you know, just running a thousand times what you already know, you're not getting anywhere. So uh, I like to do this uh, particularly. I like to get sequences and then transform them into triplets, sixtuplets, quintuplets, and even uh, seventuplets if you can do that. Uh, I'm not going to try it here right now because I may make a fool of myself. <laughs> so uh, again, I'm going to try the quintuplet on the third uh, pentatonic pattern. Again, C major. Again, running the intervals, we got one major second, major third, fifth, sixth, and tonic again. So it's just five intervals. So in triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, I'm going to make this live short today because uh, I actually have an invitation to make to you guys. Um, the reason why I'm making this live short is because I have um, a, a concert coming up for which I have to go um, 
do a sound check uh, within a few minutes now. And this is a very special concert that's sponsored by uh, a, a, an institution called Alianza Francesa. It's basically a uh, world-known uh, French school that has, uh, has its um, affiliation. What is it? Affiliation? Como é que é? Filial? Has maybe has its affiliation in Brazil, and they sponsor uh, jazz concerts. So they have invited uh, me and uh, my great friend drummer, who is actually here in my house with me, Mauro Borgesan, and the bass player Chia Pereira. We're doing a Pat Metheny tribute concert within uh, four hours, three and a half hours from now. So we're going to be uh, live on the channel Alianza Francesa Florianópolis doing a Pat Metheny tribute concert. We're going to play about ten Pat Metheny tunes. I'm going to write that for you so you can find the concert, okay? Uh, here it is. Um, Alianza Francesa Florianópolis. Just write this on YouTube, guys. There it is. Just write that on YouTube and you're going to see their channel and they're going to be transmitting tonight live three and a half hours from now at 8 p.m. Brazil time, the Pat Metheny Tribute Concert. And I promise you, just to make this fun, I'm going to use these techniques that I'm showing you right now, right here. I'm going to make these, I'm going to throw these phrases in tonight's concert so you can see them being applied real time, okay? Uh, so uh, we have just a few more minutes tonight. Today's live is going to be a little shorter because I have to run to the sound check. But it's going to be a very interesting concert. Uh, this is my, my uh, jazz trio called Mind the Gap. Uh, and we have an um, uh, Instagram page. It's basically Mind the Gap Jazz with periods in between every word. Mind.the.gap.jazz uh, on Instagram. Uh, and basically we're going to be there. So uh, I'm going to uh, use the last few minutes to answer any questions you guys might have here. But the exercises are given. And uh, you can watch this, uh, these exercises again because the live is going to stay up on YouTube, okay? So anytime you want, you can come back and watch these exercises. Have you heard? Are we going to play Have You Heard? No, Have We Heard? We're not playing that one. Uh, okay. Yeah, Richard, make sure you check it out. Uh, Machek, Alianza Francesa, a French wedding ring. No, <laughs> no, it's not a wedding ring. Alianza means it's an alliance, meaning it's a partnership. So it's, it's a French institution that has schools all over the world. And they, it, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a French uh, school that sponsors cultural events. Uh, any, uh, any, sure, sure. Can you give us a link to the concert? Uh, yes, uh, the link is, is the name I just typed in. Uh, it's not really a link, but you just type that name on YouTube. Alianza Francesa Florianópolis. I just wrote it here a few lines up. Just type that on YouTube and you're gonna, it's gonna pop up the channel. Alianza Francesa Florianópolis. Ou Sexta Jazz, cara. Sexta Jazz, Alianza, já vai... Mas e o, o nome do canal? Isso tem que, tem, é, isso faltou na divulgação ali, viu, Tia? Tem que falar pro pessoal lá pra botar nas próximas. Could you teach us some cool strumming finger patterns? Uh, Carolina, I can do that next time. Uh, but for now, if you want to see some strumming finger patterns, a few of my YouTube videos have that lesson. I do have probably some three or four videos where I show strumming patterns. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot get into that now because I have to leave in just two minutes. But uh, just make sure to check a, a few of my YouTube videos. Just, just mess around, go in there and uh, uh, scroll down uh, in a few of the videos from my channel. And some of them are going to be teaching about strumming patterns. There's one video of mine called uh, Secrets of Brazilian Samba. And I spent about 20 minutes uh, talking about some of the... Uh, some of the uh, little secrets of Brazilian samba. <laughs> My friends are laughing at me right now here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, just, so just to check this lesson, you are accenting each third, fifth, each, each third, fifth. Uh, Phil, I think I, I'm not sure I understand your question. You said, so just to check this lesson, you were accenting each third, the fifth, Note across the four? No, I, I, I'm not sure if, it's a, if you're joking, but I, I can't quite make sense of your, of, your, of your question. What I was doing is I'm doing a pattern that is made of four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And what I was doing is I was accenting different, um, different note cycles. So I was accenting every three notes, every four notes, every five notes, and so on. 
Um, so I'm basically getting the four note sequence and doing different accent, accents on it. So the four note sequence is again. And back. And I'm extending every three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh. And every, every five. That's, that's the exercise. Guys, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's not too easy, but it's really good to build your rhythmic vocabulary as well as your physical vocabulary. Very good exercise. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to cut this short today because I gotta run out to the concert sound check. But guys, thank you so much for being here. And if you missed on this exercise I just explained, just go back and watch the video. It's gonna stay up on the YouTube channel, okay? Thank you so much for being with me. It's been a pleasure. Till next time. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you guys. Be with us at the YouTube channel tonight, okay? In about um, three and a half hours from now, we're going to be having some fun. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Hey, it's short. Come on,